Ну да. Мама, привет. Ты где? В Буче. В Буче? В Буче. Нам, нам только РП осталось. Следующая остановка – Киев. At the start of the invasion of Ukraine, Russian forces expected to take the capital Kyiv within days. But poor coordination and fierce Ukrainian resistance stalled the ground assault, causing a buildup of Russian troops in outlying towns like Bucha. When the Russians retreated after a month-long occupation, they left behind evidence of war crimes that shocked the world. The Associated Press, Frontline, and C2 Research reviewed hundreds of hours of CCTV footage, intercepts of Russian phone calls, and spoke with survivors and witnesses to show what happened in Bucha and identify who was responsible. To better understand the scale of the atrocities and how the violence unfolded, we built a comprehensive 3D model of Bucha. It was based on data collected by a team of Ukrainian citizen researchers, the Talionis Group. Bucha authorities say they recovered the bodies of more than 450 men, women, and children. Nearly all of them showed signs of violent death. We mapped where the bodies were found. Each beacon represents the location of a victim, and each death a potential war crime. The largest concentration of bodies, nearly 40, was recovered along Yablonska Street, a strategic thoroughfare running east-west in an industrial section of town. We met with survivors and witnesses along Yablonska Street and beyond. Natalia Vlasenko and her family live just off Yablonska Street. In early March, her 20-year-old grandson, Dima Chapulehin, a store clerk, filmed the Russians arriving from this second-floor terrace. А він був на другому поверсі, побачив танки, бабушка, бабушка, танки. Дима wasn't the only one recording. One private home on Yablonska Street was outfitted with six security cameras. Footage from March 3rd shows Ukrainian soldiers trying to hold off the Russian advance before retreating. Soon after, dozens of Russian troops and vehicles marked with Vs take over the street and continue to pour in. By March 4th, the occupation of Bucha was nearly complete. That's when the Russians came for Dima. Він на мене автомат наставив один. Кажу, якщо по-хорошому не дають, зараз буде по-плохому. І воно бідне почало в вікно вискакувати, щоб вони мене не тронули. Такий веселий пішов. Каже, бабушка, не переживай, я прийду. Dima was rounded up as part of a Russian operation known as Zachistka, or cleansing. Soldiers searched and interrogated everyone in the area to root out threats and terrorize locals into submission. The CCTV footage offers a rare glimpse of the Russian sweeps as they unfolded. What happened in Bucha would be repeated across Ukraine. Some people were escorted with their belongings, even pets. Others were taken by force including this man who was gagged and pleading. Russian soldiers brought them to their base of operations in this industrial complex at 144 Yablonska. This office building was used as a bomb shelter before Russians took it over as their headquarters and base for interrogations. They also set up a field hospital and held civilians who didn't pose a threat in the basement. As the Russian sweeps continued, CCTV cameras also captured these nine men, 
including taxi driver Ivan Skiba, being led to 144 at gunpoint. Ну, вони там казали, ви бандеровці, там таке коректировщики і заставили нас піднятися, взяти один одного одною рукою за штани, а другу руку положити на потилицю і дивитися в землю і повели нас до Яблонської 144. When the Russians invaded, Ivan and other volunteers had been manning one of three checkpoints set up along this stretch of Yablonska. As troops advanced, volunteers from the other checkpoints escaped. Ivan and his group hid in this nearby house before they were captured. After being tortured and beaten, Ivan was taken outside the building to this corner, where the Russians started shooting. І почувствував, як мені куля пройшла в бік, і я просто впав, рухнув і не рухався, ну, давав, що я вже мертвий. Вони ходили, добивали, тому я взагалі не рухався і теж ждав, що зараз теж буде постріл мені в голову. Ну, і ну, не шевелився, не дишав, бо пара сорта йшла. Щоб, ну, щоб вони не побачили, що я ще живий. Просто замер і не рухався. Іван waited for his moment. Despite a head injury and a gunshot to the abdomen, he managed to escape to this nearby house. Within an hour, more Russian soldiers sweeping the area found Ivan. This time, they believed he was an injured civilian and brought him back to 144, not to be tortured or killed, but to give him medical treatment. Там мне медики обработали рану, наклеили капластер, там дали какую-то таблетку и спустили в бункер, там где ховалось ну, мирные от обстрелов. On March 7th, Ivan and the other civilians sheltering in the basement were finally released. The bodies of eight men were still lying on the ground next to the building, where they would remain for weeks. That same day, after hearing that civilians were being let out, Natalia Vlasenko set out to 144 Yablonska to find her grandson Dima. Я прошусь, я кажу, пустіть мене в підвал, може він там, може він ранений, може він побитий. Думаю, хай він буде ранений, хай він буде побитий, я виживий. But Dima was not among the civilians released. Natalia would have to wait. The violence spread far beyond Yablonska Street. When the occupation of Bucha turned from days to weeks, troops unable to reach Kyiv faced mounting losses and they became more erratic and unpredictable. Ну зачем ты сейчас пьёшь? А тут все такие. Тут невозможно без этого. Как нормально. Так наоборот проще вообще стрелять. In phone calls intercepted by the Ukrainian government that we verified with the help of the dossier center in London, Russian soldiers admitted to killing civilians. No, nas prikaz poker gazdanski i gazdanski valit vsih nas. Preš od mnie ruje, ja chuj znać, ja już mnie każdy krysz pojedzie. Ja tylko gazdanski перевалил na chuje już. Do nas skazali, odkryli, skazali nie wysuwajcieś. They also took over people's homes. Security cameras from inside this residence on Yablonska Street show soldiers playing with the lights, doing laundry, even chasing a dog. They eventually discover the cameras and shoot them. Outside, on the streets and fields of Bucha, more bodies started to appear. Those who were not able to flee hid inside their houses, including Natalia Vlasenko and her husband. 
they stayed behind, trying to find out what happened to their grandson Dima. Near the end of March, Russian troops returned to their house. They began interrogating her husband, Pavlo, after discovering their son's military cap in a closet. Russian forces eventually gave up on their Kiev assault and pulled out of Bucha after a month-long occupation. Day by day, people found more bodies of their friends, families, and neighbors. Soon after Natalia buried her husband, Dima's body was discovered on the grounds of 144 Yablinska Street. Dima was just one of the hundreds of bodies found throughout Bucha. The full scale of the horrors, more than 450 deaths, wouldn't be known for months. What happened along Yablunska Street is case number one for Ukraine's war crimes prosecutors. Now they know who was responsible for what happened to Ivan, Dima, and others on March 4th. Soldiers from the 76 Guards Airborne Assault Division. Ми встановили командирів цих підрозділів і встановили значну кількість осіб, які перебували в Бучі, зокрема на вулиці Яблонській в той час. Ukrainian prosecutors are pursuing the commander of the 76th Division, Major General Sergei Chubarikin, and his boss, Colonel General Alexander Chaiko, for the crime of aggression, for waging an illegal war in Ukraine. But no Russian commander is likely to show up in a Ukrainian court. The International Criminal Court is also trying to find justice for the victims. Bucha was a turning point when the world called for accountability. The survivors and families of the dead are still waiting for that call to be answered.